All right, tell me if this sounds familiar. You're diagnosed with a condition and you're told you have to change your diet. And so you go all out and do it and it lasts for maybe two or three weeks, maybe a month, and then boom, something happens and you slip up. If that's you, I want to talk today about why it is so hard for us to make permanent change in our lives. Hi everybody, I'm Ricky Heller from RickyHeller.com and if you're following a restricted diet, I can help you to stick with it for life and still love your food and move on to living a great life where food is no longer the thing that drives your every move. So for me, some of you know my story, I had to change my diet radically from a very common standard American diet, lots of junk food, lots of processed food, to a candida diet, which has no sugar, eggs, gluten, dairy, coffee, chocolate, um, what else, alcohol, <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff. I have brought chocolate back in, but that's a whole other story. So, and I did it. And I, it wasn't a smooth path, and it took me some time to figure out what worked and what didn't. But now, 20 years later, I can say I haven't eaten sugar in over 10 years. I had a 10-year period where I didn't eat sugar, a three-month period where I did, a relapse, and I haven't had it again for 10 years. And I figured out after that relapse what you need to do to make the change permanent. So today I want to talk a little bit about what are some of the reasons that we slip up or we don't allow this permanent change to happen. And I think the first thing is um, people tend to underestimate how long it's going to take for change to really take hold. So I'll just give you a quick example. One of the things that happens with me and one of the symptoms that I had with candida was chronic sinus infections. <coughs> And I had cleared those completely, but what happens now, depending on the weather and depending if I do happen to eat more grain foods, um, grain-based foods, or, you know, certain, if I'm really stressed out, sometimes my sinuses will act up. So last winter, I ended up with a cold, and I could tell it was going to spiral into a sinus infection, and I decided under no circumstances was I going to take an antibiotic unless I was about to die, and I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Because, of course, antibiotics can exacerbate your candida. So I went to my naturopath, and she gave me this whole regimen. We did herbals. We did tinctures. We did homeopathics. I did nasal irrigation, a whole bunch of stuff. And it was really good, and it helped. But the thing was, it took about six weeks to completely clear that sinus infection. Now, I wasn't walking around with a sinus infection for six weeks, but I didn't feel 100% for six weeks. And the thing is, most people would think, oh my God, something's wrong. I still have some problems. But you know, my, my naturopath was very reassuring. I didn't have a fever. Things weren't getting worse. We assumed that things were getting better, and I just continued on. But we're so used to, in our society, having that instant fix, right? So if you go to a doctor and they give you an antibiotic, usually you feel better within 48 hours. So it kind of preps us to believe that everything's going to happen that quickly. But natural treatments don't. And when you're changing habits, especially habits that have been ingrained for sometimes decades, 40, 50 years, it isn't going to happen in a week. It isn't even going to happen in a month. So what you want to do is look for that slow and steady progress, like with my sinus infection, that things aren't getting worse, but that they might be getting better slowly. So that brings me to the second reason why I think change is so difficult and the reason why people give up too soon is that they um, lose the perspective of the fact that they are actually changing. So I was working with a client a couple of years ago and when she came to me, she was dealing with a whole bunch of symptoms from Candida and one of the symptoms was difficulty sleeping. She was also under a lot of stress. So she barely slept at night. She would be up every hour and she was taking medication for that, over-the-counter medication. She wasn't happy about that. She wanted a more natural approach. So we looked at all the different factors and we implemented a program for her. And then um, things started to get better, which was great. And about a couple of months in, one day she came to the session and she was really upset. And she said, you know, I, I don't think this is working. I think I need to go back and take the pills. And so I asked her what was happening. And she said, well, I didn't sleep last night. I mean, I, I hardly slept last night. And she had, she had woken up maybe two or three times during the night. And her mind was racing and so on. 
And so she immediately thought there was one slight setback. And she immediately thought that it wasn't working. Now, luckily, what I require um, my clients to do at the beginning is we sort of um, take stock of where they are with each of their symptoms and each of their issues. And then once a month or so, we look at that again. Because what happens is we forget how far we've come. We totally lose that perspective. And sometimes you need someone to just remind you of how far you've come because we tend to see where we are in the moment as where we've always been. So if she had a bad night, she forgot that, in fact, when we looked at her progress, that she had moved from maybe four hours of sleep a night to having a good solid seven hours of sleep a night almost every single night, and that she'd woken, she used to wake up four or five times a night before, and now she was usually only waking up once a night. But she had this one bad night that kind of threw her back to the beginning. She thought she was right at the beginning. And finally she realized, oh, I see, I have been making incremental progress. So small little bits of progress are things that we don't always notice, but if we look at the whole picture, then we will see that we've actually come really far in our progress. So I think that's a really important point to remember as well. And then the third thing I just want to remind people, um, the reason, the third reason why I think we don't really um, acknowledge the change and we tend to give up too, too soon is that just as humans, we underestimate what we are capable of. The human brain is a marvelous, exquisite machine, more uh, capable than pretty much any computer you can possibly imagine. But we don't utilize it to its full capacity because our brain can allow us to do almost anything. Um, Tom Bilyeu, who is the, um, or he, he's the founder of Quest Nutrition and now Impact Theory Online, he believes that the human brain is capable, it, it has infinite capacity, that we could really achieve anything we set our minds to if we use our brains. And so just to remind you that that is true, you know, when um, people believed that it was impossible for a human being to run faster than a four-minute mile, nobody cracked it. But then Roger Bannister, who didn't have any of these preconceived notions and didn't know that he wasn't supposed to be able to run a four-minute mile, ran faster than a four-minute mile. And the interesting thing about that for me, when he broke the four-minute mile, wasn't so much that he proved we could run faster than four minutes, which of course in and of itself was great. Hey, chaser. Um, but also, what I found fascinating about that is, <laughs> Chaser, settle down, honey. <laughs> what I found fascinating about that move was that after he did it, like within the next year, dozens of other people did it. So once somebody proved that people are capable of this one thing, everybody went on and did it. And um, there have been so many human accomplishments over time that we don't even realize when we think about the capacity of human beings and what we are capable of. Just the one other one that comes to mind for me was the moon race between Russia and the US. So Russia was winning by a long shot, the moon race. And then Kennedy um, made a famous speech about America and wanting, and you know, um, his pledged, he pledged to the uh, space um, program. And what do you know? In the next like year and a half, the Americans made it to the moon before the Russians. Why? Because they set their minds to this impossible goal that they just said, we have to do it. And so they did. And people don't realize, I think as individuals, we don't realize that if we literally set our minds to something, we can do almost anything. And once you are aware of that, if you truly commit to that change, you will always find a way to do it. Now, for, for most of us, that's where we might need some additional help with keeping us on track, keeping us accountable, and like I was saying earlier, reminding us of all the progress we've made so far. So I know for me personally, um, so much of the change I made is attributable to my working with my coach. So if that's something that you think um, you would like to do, if you feel like you want to commit to this change and you're determined to make that change, but you're just not sure how to do it on your own, 
then I would love to talk to you. I have some free clarity calls that you can sign up for where we could chat about whether or not coaching would be a good fit for you. These are free calls, totally no pressure. And that's just not what I do. But we'll talk about what your challenges are, what are some of the next moves for you, and then we can see if we would be a good fit together. So if that's something that interests you, you can sign up at rickyheller.com forward slash clarity. I would love to chat with you and see if I can help you get on track with the changes that you want to make in your life. All right, everybody, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you again soon.